had any of this broke, there's no telling what could have happened to me and Maria. I felt really bad after seeing this that I had put both our lives in danger due to ignorance. That alone is what causes rigs to end up in a ditch somewhere. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Maria is behind the camera today. I'm here with Blue Ox because they just saved us from a major catastrophe. So we're going to go into detail on that. So stand by and we'll get right back to it. All right, this is a special one because we didn't know how this was going to turn out and it just happened to be that we have somebody with us that knew everything about everything. He's one of them. <laughs> you know, like us, it's like, okay, we're smart, we know it all, we know about a lot of things, and we're convinced how comfortable we are with what we have. Clay here had this apparition of... I, I need you to come and certify what I have, but I already know, and he em emphasized, he, he emphasized a lot about, I know all my rig, I know the top, the bottom, the underneath, I, I just want you to check on the warranty part because I got this thing going on, so, all right, well, I'm confused when he's talking because I'm thinking, what does he want? If you know everything about everything, why are you calling me? So we went into this back and forth and i said okay well uh, we'll do it so we'll do an inspection on his rig and, and this is why we brought this up because clay also after we found a couple of things had his way of seeing what happened so in a way i think he had some kind of um he had some kind of meltdown with his unit after we found a couple of things that he forgot to think about and and we know we don't know what we don't know so I will refer to one of our videos with an airplane inspector that we had not too long ago. Jeff specifically says you hire the specialist in your field because you don't know what you're looking at when it's not your field. Okay, we, we went through the process. We finally understood each other what you were looking for. Right. What was your purpose of getting that inspection? What, what was the end game of saying, well, listen, you told me before, I know everything about everything, I just need you to check those five bucks. Right. Which you knew I wasn't comfortable with checking Correct. five bucks, which got me to the roof, the floor, the ceiling, the ce and that's who I am. But what was your end game on having this? So how we ended up to where, where we were was, Marie and I have a useless warranty that, <laughs> I say useless, y'all, because it's never gonna pay out. But it does provide emotional comfort and, and for the wives, for yes, the wives yes. and a future argument for me to have with somebody in case I don't argue enough. <clears throat> but what it is, it's called a forever warranty and they threw it in when we bought the fifth wheel. As part of that, we have to have the rig inspected on multiple key components. So they want to test the burner. They want, to they want somebody to look at the roof, make sure there's no leaks. They want to look at the suspension and just general overall things. Well, I know that Blue Ox does not do general overviews and because we have to go all the way back to completely unpack this, but one of the reasons why Marie and I were at the Hershey Show was to look at a very specific RV that we're potentially, we might, maybe, goodwill in the creek doesn't rise. Contemplating we, seriously. Contemplating seriously, maybe trading our rig for a different RV that might be two feet longer that gives us a bigger closet and washer and dryer. For the so, yes. In order to make sure that our RV was in tip-top shape, because I already knew it was, and that's a key point here, keep that in mind, I wanted to get that inspection done. Um, we met Pierre and Laurel at a creator's conference in Hershey that we just happened to be at. So I asked Pierre if he could could help us out and go through this list of things that the warranty wants checked off. Now, due to my hearing deficiency and his personality, <laughs> we, we didn't hit it off right off the bat. He didn't understand me and I couldn't hear what he was asking. We he finally just, got that result. He just nods all the time, yep. So, Pierre comes out and we give him the list of things that, that we need checked and 
you know, he finds a couple issues with the roof, which, you know, I was thankful for because we don't want our rig going to somebody that, and it have a leak in the roof. So I started making a list of everything and he's walking around and I mean, so we, we turned this into, we thought, well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do a collaboration video. My understanding of what an RV inspector did was right around here. I thought maybe they fill the water tanks. Maybe they look for leaks. I didn't really understand everything that goes into it. So after Blue Ox came on site, we talked about what we, we needed to satisfy the warranty inspection, um, which after talking with them, came to find out, is extremely deficient from what they actually do as an RV inspection. Um, they, they spend way more time checking way more things than, than what our, our form needed filled out. They go in and they spend eight to 10 hours on the inside and the outside. That, that's two people working in tandem, checking everything. So from my standpoint, you know, with, this is our second rig that we bought. You know, my thought was when somebody says, hey, inspect your RV before you take delivery of it. My thought was you fill the fresh water tanks, make sure the water pump works. You check the power, make sure the lights come on. It never in a million years occurred to me that I didn't know what I didn't know, which is what Pierre helped fill out these deficiencies in my thought. With bedroom slides, there, there are flaps that are supposed to be up there and they're supposed to hang all the way down to cover your rollers. You shouldn't be able to stick your hands all the way in. Under the slides, there again, there are supposed to be rubber seals down there that water can't splash up from the tires and soak the, the living room floor. There are just tons of things that if you don't know, you don't know what to look for. And if you've never seen what right looks like, you don't know what right looks like. So we started going through the, the rig and after we, we hit a couple spots on it, um, the big one for us was, was the suspension. Um, all right, so let me, let me interject in here. So this is what happened. So I've got, I've got a shackle, I've got, I've got a leaf spring suspension. You know at the end you got those yokes where the blade comes up. So in this little yoke, there's a bolt. But the bolt is not in the middle. It, it's, it's down here. So that becomes a problem right away. I said, okay, um, we might have a bigger issue than, than we think, and you, you probably need to change those bolts because that CRE 3000 should have wet bolts, should have right. a bolt with a greasing point, which his didn't come with it. And that's a research that he did last week that we talked about. And now I even emphasize about this, and now I'm going to look into this even more, but dealers do whatever they want. And that's the purpose of this. They do whatever they want. So if they skip you on parts, you'll never know. That wasn't part of your nomenclature of everything that comes with the unit. So that's where the inspector, we have this knowledge because like Clay was saying, we've seen a unit that is good and we see the difference between a unit that's modified or has 50,000 miles, 50,000 miles. The guy who knows it all didn't even check his bolts ever. Go figure that one. Yep. Carry on. So what we did was we... Uh, you did a lot of research. You told me. We stayed in touch and you said... Did a ton of research, um, and the person I spoke with at Moride said that the Cree 3000 suspension kit is never sold without wet bolts. So that immediately raised a red flag. Well, if we don't have wet bolts, what the hell's kind of bolts do we have in there? So, like Pierre was saying, you know, the, the shackle bolts are supposed to be round. These were oblonged. It, it had been bouncing around and moving and all kind of other things. So... To their credit, um, General RV was able to get us in. They put the, the rig up on a lift and we thought it was just gonna be replacing the, the Moride wet bolt kit. So we ordered this kit, we, we took it into General RV. General RV lifts the unit up and it's way worse than, than just some wore out bolts. All right, our rig has about 50,000 miles on it. Uh, honestly, I never thought to look at these components and to be honest, I, I just assumed they were like a car. I mean, you change your shocks every 50, 100,000 miles. This thing doesn't have shocks. I figured the leaf springs ought to be good for 100 grand. So we, we never checked this. And thank God, Blue Ox came along and started doing their, their inspection. And I'll show you why. 
I learned a new vocabulary as well. So this is the equalizer, all right? This is what hangs from your, your main thing. Your, your shackles hang off of that like that, and then your leaf springs connect up to that. They go to the frame of the, the RV. This is the backside where that hole has been wallowed out. It's no longer round. It's oblong, which means this thing was doing this in the frame of the RV for quite some time. Now, because this was gyrating around, so that did the same thing basically. These did the exact same thing. And as you can see, that one is almost all the way busted through, which would have dropped a, a shackle, which means one axle would have come loose. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, you can see on on the equalizer, it's welded and boxed across the tops and the sides. It has two rubber bushings to soften it. When you spin it around to this side, the weld is busted all the way up to the top of it. Had this come loose, that whole driver side axle would have come loose, taken out the rear axle, the twisting of it would have busted the other side loose. It would have been a mess, a big mess. So you're telling me this was the driver's side? This was the driver's side. That's, this was the, that's the side we didn't even get to. Correct. So we started with the stronger side, which alarmed Clay in a nice way. And I, I just want to say this for you people watching out there. He's got a normal trailer. Yes, they're not wet bolts. I, I understand that would help. But that's 50,000 miles on a, on, on a trailer. And don't get comfortable because you, you, you hear 15, you say, well, I only did 15, 20,000 since the last two, four years. Well, you're sitting down at home. It's rusting because you're parking it half the year. We live full time. This is a little bit different than what other people do. So I just wanted to point that out. Well, but still, here, here's how difficult it is to see what this stuff looks like. And I'm going to try and get a bolt here. These are one-time use bolts, by the way. Once you take them off, you cannot reuse them. They're oblong shaped and they're torqued on. So when you've got this thing sitting up inside your frame, just glancing at it is very, very hard to see. This is why you need a trained inspector, a trained eye looking at these things. Because you can see just enough yeah, deformation around the bottom and these things get dirty. You need somebody that knows what right looks like. Now, in our case, this one was so bad and I have to give a, a big thank you to, to General RV. We did not buy new uh, equalizers. So we had one that was bad. General RV gave us one for free off of a display model that they had to put our rig back together. I can't put anything on anybody other than we, we've got what appears to be a failure. Now these, these are not failure. This is normal wear, I would say. Well, what this is. That's Dexter. This is a Dexter application. Yeah. So these and these bolts are not Moride. So what happened is somebody, and I'm, I'm going to say Dexter, I don't know for sure, let me be clear, clear about that. An equalizer was purchased, not a Cree 3000 system. So you've got to be really careful when somebody says it has a Cree 3000 system on it, make sure it has their shackles, wet bolts, everything. I'm going to go on record and say, if it's got a Cree 3000 equalizer and it doesn't have wet bolts, it's not the suspension system. It's just the equalizer. These are Dexter. They're the proper bolts. They've, they've got bite rings on them. You know, they're, they're pressed in and, and torqued. But he, here's my problem, and Pierre, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, but is that not two different types of bushing? Is one not brass yeah. and one plastic? Yeah, it is. So that's what happened is some of them will put those, those plastic sleeve and some of them will put those copper sleeve, which copper, it's, for me, it's easier to see. These are always sneaky because they look like they're okay at the end, but see the inside what happened? It went through the bolt. So you don't see this when it's 
hidden in there. So that's what I hate about them. And they should be copper in my book anyway. So here's my thinking, because I've only found two of these. Moride came with the brass bushings. Okay. Dexter came with the nylon. Okay, and let's remember, those are two different manufacturers. They're two different manufacturers. Your axle and your leaf spring all Dexter. Are always, uh, I'll say almost all the time, Dexter. The, that right there, I don't know if you can get a close-up of just how thin that is. So good thing you and I didn't attack this, huh? Uh, that's what, that's what I was telling Maria. <laughs> if, if we had done this, that yep. rig would be there still. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the big takeaway. One, we we avoided what I consider a catastrophe. That That alone is what causes rigs to end up in a ditch somewhere. Two, the trailer pulls so much better. So y'all, oh, you see if, the difference. Oh, cool. If if you're getting clunking and you're getting on metal on metal sounds, um, check check this stuff because now our rig is almost like it's floating on clouds. I can feel the the. Leaf the, the leaf, I can feel the leaf springs actually doing their leaf job. Springs. Oh, and, and I got to say this because we were, when you were there at General, Roland told me we were at the same General all day. We're doing an inspection, which I didn't know. Good thing because we would have never done our job. My point is when you're at dealership and a lot of numb nuts that work in the yard don't have a clue how to not destroy those. So my point is keep an eye on those. You got two axles and those guys lift the front end and they steer the crap out of them and turn them on zero turn. The tires are going on, the, you've seen this before. You hear the clunk, the plink, the blunk, the clunks are right here. Here's your clunk right there. So keep this in mind. This is what they do to your rig. They're not smart enough to lift it enough and actually turn it on one axle on two wheels. Wheels would just do this. I can't even begin to you can. You can start tanking me now. I mean, you, you can. You can do that. It's look, okay. Look at how that how that's puckered. I out. know. That, that's what I was looking at. Is every one of them. The thing, the more ride kit is about four oh, of these okay. put together. Okay. The shackles are half inch on either side. Yes. I mean they're massive. Yes, you're right. So okay. Yeah. So that's the cheap version, and more ride has the better version. So just saying. This is Dexter. Yeah. We're not gonna name any name, but. Those are all Dexter. These may only have a 50,000 mile limit on them. I, I don't know. Um, it, it may have a 12,000. It may be like your bearings to yeah. where you know, yeah. you're supposed exactly. to replace them you know, every 6,000 miles or, or one year. I, I don't know because I just assumed that they were like my old 66 Chevy truck. And as long as it rolled, it was good. Um, but this to me was eye-opening enough to, to do a video and you know Pierre and I joked with each other uh, about you know him doing the inspection on our RV and he was actually kind of concerned that maybe he had offended us and I can tell you right now if you're the type of person that gets offended by somebody pointing out a deficiency in, in your trailer that you spent thousands of dollars on you're a jerk you shouldn't want things to stay broken on your rig. You shouldn't want things like this to be hidden from you. You should correct this so you don't kill yourself or somebody else on the road. And so that's why I think an RV inspection is a fantastic idea. The strive of wanting to excel and see every square inch of the unit is embedded into Laurel and I. That's how we are. That's that's how that's how we run our business, and that's why. We are who we are, and a lot of people rely on us to the highest level where, okay, now it's even worse because we got to make sure that we comply to their expectation. Going back to your point about um, how people don't want to hear the truth, I, I think this is human. It's like every problem we find in, in RVs, you want to make yourself feel good, so you hire an inspector. Well, I'm buying this brand new rig, and I'm going to hire an inspector, and he's going to tell me that it's all fine. Right. Like you did. Okay, I want this to be perfect. So I'm going to hire you. You're going to tell me it's perfect. And that's what you told me. You're going to tell me it's perfect. And right. here's the list. The, the di and honestly, you know, and all y'all can hear this straight from me. The reason he's jabbing me about it being perfect is that's what I told him. I stay up on everything on that rig. I know yeah. the rig inside out. Well, 
I knew the rig up to what I knew. Pierre comes along and just destroys all that, throws it overboard. I had never thought to look at stuff like this. You know, it just, I knew to clean the AC units. I knew to, to check for propane leaks. You know, I knew to make sure the fuses were good, the tail lights were good. You know, if trim came off, put it back in place. Those were the, the replace the wheel bearings, repack them. You know, those were the things that, that I knew. You had sealant everywhere. I know on the surface, I knew you were taking care of it. It, to your level of knowledge. That's it, to my level of knowledge. Yeah. So it's like buying a new rig, people. It's the same thing. Because you think you're paying 80,000, 150, half a million, 2.2 million. We have an SX we're gonna to have to inspect. They're paying 2 million. Well, why would they hire us? What's the point? They, they paid 2 million. What's the difference with you paying 80,000 or 100,000? There's no difference to me. It's a box. And somebody's got to have knowledge in what they're looking for. And again, I'm going to say, we've had some customers that are inspectors in other fields. Why do they rely on us? Just like I would rely on them if I'm flying a plane, I'm going to call Jeff. Jeff, you need to inspect my plane. I don't know how to inspect a plane. I can fly them, but I don't know how to inspect them. That's what I'm saying. We don't need to be stubborn. We just need to be you and admit that, okay, some people might know a little bit more than me. And that's the giveaway and the takeaway from this so just take this home please you only know what you know yep. and that's for me that's that's this is it i just happened to see a little bit more of things because i've seen it over and over and we used to manufacture trailers also so that's the other point i used to install dexter torque flex suspension so i'm used to not shackles, guys. I, I never use shackle. We use Torflex. So I would like to see the industry going with Torflex for me because it's way easier. It's simple. We don't have these gizmo. It's just in a rubber sleeve and it's going up and down. So I hope we scared the bejesus out of you and you learned something out of this. Hope that Hopefully we scare the bejesus out of it. You go check your freaking suspension or you call somebody that knows what they're yep. doing and have them check it for you. That would be, that'd be the prudent thing to do. To wrap all this up, one, it, get under your rig and check this stuff. Two, um, don't use nylon bushings. Three, don't just assume that you know how to inspect your RV. Actually spend a little money and hire somebody to come look through it because I honestly think, not to be dramatic because I don't want that to come off this way, but had any of this broke, there's no telling what could have happened to me and Maria. Um, and I, I felt really bad after seeing this that I had put both our lives in danger due to ignorance. So take it for what you will, get it inspected. You don't know what you don't know. Clay doesn't know about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see y'all next week and y'all stay safe. Thanks for watching. Had your kids, had your wife. He doesn't have a f <laughs> what he's saying. What, what does that mean? How the hell is that going to work? We don't plan jack Me neither. Pierre and Laurel. Laurel. You figure it out. All right, so where was I? It's just a hodgepodge of uh, Okay, so miles no? Exactly. Uh, hell, I don't know. Uh, try yeah. another word. I don't even know what I was saying. What are those things called? Leaf springs. Leaf springs. Leave? Leaf. leaf leaf that's what i said it's the just southern check. thing check. yeah and I, i'm not i'm not pointing fingers and you know I, hell the, i am the those are dexter and it's a southern thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like that one you gotta say that again slowly so Woo. <laughs> so it's not about the destination it's all about the adventure oh that was my line he'll say he'll say it later that i knew he's gonna it's yep. all about the journey. It's all, all about the, the journey. journey. <laughs> Again, it proves the point. It's not about the destination. You want me to say it now? It's, it's all journey. about the destination. No, it's all about the journey. It's all about the journey. It's I don't even know journey. either. She's afraid you're going to run out of battery. Hurry up. What is it again? Oh. Three. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. <laughs> You do. You don't oh, have an end. Uh, Maria usually does you the. 
It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Thank I you. Right? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> See you next week, That was nice.